I haven't made a video in like, what, four days, five days? Oh my God, what have you been doing without me? Hi everyone, Donut here. I took a little break there over the weekend. It was my birthday weekend. I'm now 31 years of age. Uh, I had a good stream. I played that new game Scum for a little bit. I'll be playing that again on the Steam store on Friday. Anyways, we're going to take a look at three different police incidents today, and they all have pretty crazy videos. On February 18th in Bexar County, Texas, a Texas trooper pulled over 33-year-old Manuel Montalongo for a minor traffic violation. The suspect gave the trooper a false name. The trooper tried to arrest the suspect, and the suspect took off. A short pursuit took place, and the trooper finagled his car around to use it as a barricade in front of the suspect. Fortunately for us, the entire incident was captured on camera by some pretty badass Texas DPS helicopter helicopter pilots. Before we get into any more of this incident, I just want to point out that in this video, there's going to be a lot of armchair policing, and it's not to shit on the officers. It's purely from a training perspective, so we can all take a look at that and say, oh, okay, well, you know, we'll, we need to train better on that. We can look at that in the future, and uh, we know not to do that now. Learning from your mistakes. I wasn't there. You weren't there. We didn't see, smell, feel what that, you know, specific officer felt, but we're still going to go over it. Guys, under the full board. Be careful. Be careful. Under the floorboard, guys. Watch it. Taking up a defensive position, guys. I'm going to stop it right there and ask you, what was the big tactical mistake made by the trooper there? He left his cover. Not that cars are good cover. Cars actually suck for cover. But he left it, and the suspect actually waited for him to get close enough before attacking. As soon as the trooper gets close enough for the suspect to believe he can make a shot, the suspect pops over the car and lands a shot right in the trooper's right arm. He's taking up a defensive position, guys. Shot fired, shot Another trooper who's behind the suspect with a long gun takes the suspect down and the suspect eventually dies. Shot fired, shot fired, troop down, troop down. Let's get EMS and route. Troops down, got a handgun. Troops down. A very positive thing to look at training-wise is the fact that the trooper had a tourniquet and he immediately started self-administering it to himself. Troop down, troop down. Let's get EMS and route. Troops down, got a handgun. Troops down. Could it be a small, it's going to be a small caliber weapon, small caliber weapon, uh, either 9 mil, something like that, to EMS, and uh, he shot in the right arm. He saw his arm, he saw that he was messed up, he saw how much blood he was losing, and he immediately went for his tourniquet. If you police and you don't carry a tourniquet on you, then you're wrong. That tourniquet that he used in this situation was very crucial to him not dying on the side of the road because some piece of shit wanted to take shots at him. Another thing to point out with the training aspect of this situation is the crossfire between the two troopers. They're directly across from each other, it looks like. With that being said, this was a super dynamic situation. It happened very, very quick, so they didn't really have time to put a game plan together, and they did very well with what they had at the time. Here's why I say the Texas DPS helicopter pilots are f***ing badass. They said, nah, uh we ain't waiting on no ambu. They dropped down, they picked the trooper up, and they flew him right to the hospital where he had surgery and lived. 107, stand by, we'll get an ETA. 7 to the troops, I think we're going to try to land and medevac back him ourselves. Copy that. 107, will you be taking them to SAMC so that we can uh, notify them? Uh, university. Good on you guys, that was pretty cool. Texas DPS 1, bad guy 0. Next incident that we're going to talk about also happened in Bexar County, Texas. It also involved the Texas DPS, and I'm pretty sure it's the same helicopter pilot. This incident that we're about to take a look at involved some pretty bad life decisions involving a baby and a little bit of meth sprinkled on top. Texas troopers tried to pull over 29-year-old Caitlin Rodriguez for some outstanding felony warrants when she took off on them, leading them on a pursuit that went up to speeds of over 100 miles an hour with a baby in her back seat. The video starts off with Mom of the Year getting spike stripped by Texas DPS, narrowly avoiding a metal barrier, and then almost flipping the SUV with the baby still in the back seat. Traffic is light to moderate, almost struck another vehicle passing. Driveway patrol just got a spike. I, oh, went off road, looks like she's about to wreck. No, she still got it. Driveway patrol just got a spike. I went off road. Looks like she's taking military drive. Looks like uh, they're gonna crash almost. Standby, still going. 
We're going military southbound, 13. We're in oncoming traffic now, oncoming traffic. And now center median, 13. We're doing We're Hold here, hold here, 1050, 1050, 1050 at 2536, and military. You would think the chase would be over after she 1050s into the back of a truck going at a pretty high rate of speed, but no, not quite. She jumps out of the car, grabs the baby, and then tries to hijack another SUV with the baby. Banned tactical assault babies. She's in the back, she's in the back seat. She's got the baby and we're running. We're running. Okay, we're getting in a white, we're getting in a white Nissan Xterra, white Nissan Xterra, troops in front of it, hold the air, hold the air. Doors are open, troops trying to get her out now. Female driver of this white Nissan Xterra also has a child, and the uh, the baby safe. The baby safe. 107 EMS has been notified. Texas troopers pull up on scene and put an end to all this malarkey. Man, I've been waiting to use malarkey. <laughs> what a great word. Mrs. Rodriguez ended up being charged with child endangerment, evading arrest, and possession of a controlled substance, which. I'm guessing is meth. You may have already seen this video out of Austin, Texas. I've been spreading it around quite a bit on my Facebook and on my Twitter, but it's new video showing that dipshit bomber from back in March bombing himself. You never use your own product, dumbass. Everyone knows that. Just in case you don't remember it, a 23-year-old suspect had everyone in Austin, Texas a little bit nervous between March 2nd and March 20th after he mailed bomb packages to random people. His serial bombing spree consisted of five different packages that ended up killing two people and injuring five others. By figuring out the materials that he used in his bombs and a little bit of surveillance footage, they were able to track him down to a motel that he was holed up in. Well, they didn't want to take him down in the motel because he makes bombs and there might be people in the motel, so they wait for him to leave the motel in his truck. A few vans full of SWAT dudes roll up, hit him from behind, and then this happens. Uh, I think it's a pretty good plan. We should be able to pull it off this time. Uh, what do you think, Abdul? Can you give me a number crunch real quick? Uh, yeah, give me a sec. I'm coming up with 32 point Three, three, uh, repeating, of course, percentage of survival. Well, that's a lot better than we usually do. Uh, All right, thumbs up. Ready, guys. Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins. Oh my God, he just ran in. Save him. Oh, geez, stick to the plane. Oh, Jesus. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> stick to the pledge. Huh? Leroy Jenkins there decided to run up to the truck of a known bomb maker and use the plastic stock on his AR to try and bust the window out, and it almost cost him his life. He ended up suffering only minor injuries, and he put himself right back into the fight. Again, I'm not casting shade on anyone. I'm just memeing on you a little bit, buddy. I was talking to a friend with that department, and we were saying, well, you know, he probably got tunnel vision. He wanted to get the bad guy, and he just went for it. Fortunately, that guy kind of sucked at making bombs, and it wasn't a bigger explosion. I would have hated to have seen on the news, you know, 10 Austin SWAT guys taken out by bomber. It just seems like one of those situations where it would have been best to take them out on the road, yes, away from people, but also box them in and then call them out. But I wasn't there, I'm just saying this for training purposes, so let me know what you think in the comments below. By the way, while I've got you here, I think I've cracked the YouTube code, I think I've figured out how to finally get ads. You see, a video that I made where five people ended up being shot, several of them died, and a woman almost got her head cut off, received ads, but, Another video I made about jorts and uh, another video I made about lasagna had their ads taken away. I believe that this is because YouTube, in order to grant people ads, needs a blood sacrifice. <laughs> So what is on the plate for this week? Uh, going to try to do Leo recaps every day. We're going to try to talk about some old school police incidents. Of course, I'm going to stream after this. So if you want to hop on over to twitch.tv slash donut operator, as soon as you see this video, then I would be more than happy to discuss some things with you about police or memes or whatever. I asked the question today on Twitter, should I start a podcast? And there was an overwhelming amount of people who said yes. So that might be a future thing. I just need to figure out the best way to do that. I have a lot of really cool friends who would love to tell their stories about being a 
police officer and are being in the military, you know, just doing crazy shit. Well, everyone, this is Donut, and I apologize for taking a few days off. I need a little bit of time off, and it was pretty fun. It was pretty great. I want all of you, though, to have a fantastic day.